You're watching Euronews Now. I'm Takumbo Salako with your top stories. Fierce fighting moves closer to the center of the Ukraine capital. Authorities have now imposed a new curfew after residential flats were hit by Russian strikes. Civilian evacuations are continuing in the southern city of Mariupol, but the situation remains increasingly desperate with supplies of food and water running out. And new lockdowns for some, while rules are relaxed for others. COVID concerns are rising as reported cases hit record highs. A convoy of 160 civilian cars has at last managed to leave the devastated city of Mariupol along a designated humanitarian route. After several days of failed attempts to deliver supplies and provide safe passage out for trapped civilians, the convoy is headed for the city of Zaporizhia. Ukraine's military has since claimed to have repelled a Russian attempt to control the strategic port. Russia's relentless bombardment of Ukraine's major cities has forced nearly three million people to flee the country. The Red Cross is describing conditions for those left behind as nothing short of a nightmare. But despite the shelling, the Pentagon claims the Russian invasion is still not going to plan. What are you taking this as? Is this... It doesn't change, I think, our general understanding that they continue to be frustrated by a very stiff Ukrainian resistance and they are not making the kind of progress on the ground that we believe they thought they would be making by this point. In the Russian-backed, self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, officials have reported that at least 20 people were killed and 26 injured after a Ukrainian tactical ballistic missile Tochka hit the central city of Donetsk. Officials there claim the missile was equipped with cluster bombs. A Russian defense spokesperson vowed to destroy Ukraine's missile building facilities in retaliation for the firing of which Ukraine denies. And in Russia, an editor at state-run Channel 1 interrupted a broadcast by shouting no to war and holding a sign that read, don't believe the propaganda. They are lying to you here. Maria Ovsianikova, who had pre-recorded a message before her protest, has since been arrested. Residential buildings in Ukraine's capital have been hit as fighting flared in the early hours of this morning. Let's get the latest from the ground from our international correspondent, Annalise Borges, who's there for us. Annalise, what more do we know at this moment? Hi there, Tokes. Well, firefighters continue battling the blazes here in this 16-story building that was hit uh, in the early hours of Tuesday in the west of the Ukrainian capital. I'm going to step aside just to give you an idea of the extent of the damage. There are uh, many, many teams of emergency responders still here. They have been here for the last couple of hours, uh, at least uh, four hours or so, trying to put out this fire. In front of that building, there is a huge crater that is probably where the shell uh, hit. Uh, and, of course, uh, this is um, a building surrounded by other buildings. This is a, a residential area uh, with uh, about 200,000 people that live in the vicinity. Um, and many of the residents, uh, some of the survivors of this uh, attack and others that live nearby are uh, very much in shock this morning, saying they woke up uh, to a loud bang and then the fire. Some were able to leave the building by themselves. Others were uh, on higher floors, were not able to leave alone. One woman died on the 16th floor waiting for rescue. Uh, in the balcony of her apartment. Uh, we've been um, also uh, observing the amount of debris around here. Many, many cars destroyed. I'm right next to a truck that is uh, virtually completely destroyed. The buildings surrounding uh, are also uh, significantly damaged. And of course, this comes a day after other areas of Kyiv were hit. Um, two people at least were killed on Monday when shells hit different neighborhoods. Uh, we are unsure, of course, whether or not uh, those were directly targeted or were a result of uh, rockets being intercepted by the Ukrainian defense system. Tokes. Annalise, this comes, of course, as those peace talks between Ukrainian and Russian officials are set to resume today. Uh, what, how has President Zelensky responded to this? 
Well, Volodymyr Zelensky released a message uh, overnight and uh, said uh, that he wanted to address Russian troops, Russian troops that are currently almost uh, completely encircling the Ukrainian capital. He said that if these Russian soldiers agree to surrender, that Ukrainians will treat them with dignity. Uh, Volodymyr Zelensky has been addressing the Ukrainian public almost every day, sometimes multiple times a day, and that uh, there would be a, a, a fourth round of talks as planned after, of course, uh, there was a technical pause on Monday. Uh, it is unclear whether or not those talks are actually advancing uh, or making much progress. The reality here on the ground in the capital, Kyiv, and in other parts of Ukraine is this, of course, is uh, quite a lot of destruction, quite a lot of damage and, of course, many innocent lives, civilians caught in this war. We can't relax for a moment. These are the words of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in one of his daily messages to the Ukrainian people. After accusing Russia of preparing for decades to destroy neighboring countries, Zelensky has promised a new beginning. Russian troops continue to destroy our infrastructure, continue to destroy our cities. Kyiv region, Chernihiv region, Sumy region, Kharkiv, the south, Donbass. But know that we will rebuild everything, we will restore everything, every street in every city, every house, every apartment of every Ukrainian. After the war, I am sure we will be able to do it quickly. We will direct all our efforts to do this, all with the help of the world. We are already accumulating funds so that Ukraine can live on. Meanwhile, in a difficult visit to Moscow, the Qatari foreign minister asked that his Russian counterpart give priority to the voice of wisdom and avoid intensifying the military intervention in Ukraine. We value the attention that the Qatari authorities and personally, Amir Taman. The ruler of Qatar is paying attention to the current situation. We value the fact that Qatar wants and tries to use its opportunities to help reach agreements to those questions that are on today's agenda. Taking into consideration pan-European security, including the security of Ukraine and the security of Russia. The Vatican has also offered to mediate with the Russian foreign minister but has not yet received a reply. Talks on war and a possible ceasefire between the two sides have been suspended for the day but will resume on Tuesday. Russia is keeping up its bombardment of Ukrainian cities. This was an apartment block in Kyiv after missiles slammed into it on Monday. Both sides are keeping a fragile diplomatic path open with talks that were interrupted yesterday, reportedly for a technical problem. They are set to resume today. While Washington supports Ukraine's participation in talks with Russia, the Biden administration says it needs to be convinced of President Putin's sincerity and that he would need to show signs of de-escalation in order to demonstrate good faith. The U.S. is seeking reassurances from China that it won't offer financial and military assistance to Moscow. Officials met in Rome on the subject, with Beijing accusing Washington of spreading disinformation and Russia denying it has asked for help. This, as Ukraine demands, Russia is immediately expelled from the Council of Europe. During a visit to North Macedonia, EU foreign policy chief Joseph Boré denounced the barbaric aggression of Russia against the people of Ukraine. The Russian armed forces continue to carry an air missile and artillery strikes targeting civilians, peaceful neighbours, resulting food reserves hospitals and schools. No member state has ever been expelled from the council which was created in 1949. Both Russia and Ukraine are members. We're going to take a break on the program but we'll be back with more news and analysis after this break.